Hey guys, it's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Thursday afternoon, November 9th, 2017. Record snowfall across North America. Over half of the states are, have snow. You know that if you watch our channel. And we're prepping. We're prepping because where we live, you need rigid greenhouses to begin with. And for the weather that's coming, Bridges and greenhouses will be imperative. So we're developing some greenhouse designs that we can share with the public and build with in front of you in pieces. So maybe you can glean some insight or together we can figure out how to problem solve and make better designs. Cheaper. Now we purchased this property because it has tons of free natural resources. We own the entire river valley, so we have access to sand, a river jack of all different sizes, and that's down here. We also own this mountain and all that standing wood, and everything else is reservation and national forest. So I got a series of quarries out here where I get free material. You also want to buy property that has no restrictions. So you can do whatever you want and no one can say a thing. We got another parcel where that is the main issue. So what you're looking at is a finished foundation, at least R40 with a styro wrap around, a sunwood base plate that's attached with two types of fasteners. I used all threads. And I also use Tapcons, which is a blue screw. This is a cheaper alternative. I like to use both because I can go over later and tighten up any of the places that are a little loose with the Tapcon because I want this to be solid. And I also use a double styrofoam sill plate, which you can find in anywhere, any hardware store or building supply. Now the glazing we want with is Solex, S-O-L-E-X-X. -X. It's made in the USA. It has the highest R rating of any polycarbonate. It's expensive, but it lasts for over a decade, so it's not that expensive. In fact, I think it could last forever um, if treated properly. But we're testing it. So we'll see. The only way you, you the key to Solex, a couple of things. Let me tell you how it installs. Most polycarbonate you can put in with a simple self-tapping roofing screw that has a rubberized washer on it and a hex head. They're called self-piercing roof screws. They're about nine cents each. They're quite expensive. So heads up there. Buy in bulk and you get a really much better deal. I buy $25 10-pound bags or something like that. You're going to need a, a latex caulk, 40-year. I use an acrylic latex. It's cheap. It also goes on white and turns clear so you can see what you're doing. And it's much less messy than pure silicon. Whew, I don't know if you've ever used a pure silicon. This is an acrylic latex with silicon. And they're only 2 bucks a tube. So you have to caulk the ends to give it that R value. This would not be the same R value. It's uncaulked. So I'm going to be caulking the whole end. And also the screw spacing is not important just as long as you have good attachment. And the product itself, Solex, is 49 and 5 eighths inches wide. Very strange diameter. So you need to have custom joist spacing where your centers are at 49 and 5 eighths instead of 48. So that's a little odd. Plus... You need to have a center joist on the 49 inches at, at minimum. And this gives me 110 snow load. And because of the sun we have here, there's going to be zero snow load. Because as soon as the snow hits that Solex, boy, whew, it's going to come right down and accumulate here. And I could just run the tractor by and take that away with the plow. Whew, whew. So it's, easy, it's important to have a plan if you're in a high snow area of how you're going to remove the snow that's accumulating. On the other design, we have a drop off in a hill so that snow can fall all the way down past the greenhouse. And then we have some cliff design greenhouses up here where the snow obviously will never accumulate. And that'll be next year when we get to these set in 
uh, diagonal cliff wallapinis. Really interesting. I hope uh, YouTube is still up and we can still share this information with you. So let's go back to the glazing. Uh, you want to make sure that there's a drip edge so your glazing has to extend past the edge here so that you can trap all the heat. You don't want any leakage. All the heat will be trapped and go up into the greenhouse. This will also shed everything past the entire structure. So there's going to be a little face plate here. It's called the fascia board that I'll put on. And it'll come just short of the edge of this. But that's, I'm just building this today to show you where I'm at. And then if we come inside, it's key to make this entire thing super airtight because it's a geothermal greenhouse. So we don't want to lose anything. So you see how I have these nice, tight, alternating cutoffs. And then halfway up through the 12-foot run here, I have little support crosses so that I can have a place to attach and maybe hang some uh, shelving for some raised sprouting beds right here that might just hang above everything because we want to utilize all the space in here. Now it's a geothermal greenhouse, super insulated foundation all around, R40 to 50. And we're going to have uh, what's called drain tile here in these channels. That There's going to be lots of holes dug in here. This is not, it's not even finished. Sinuous patterns of tubes in the ground that captures the heat from up here in the insulated back portion of the greenhouse. This wall is only half done. This is going to be all covered. So it's going to suck the hot air from up here into the ground. Now we're going to utilize earth ship technology in here. At three feet in the climate battery here, we're going to be using tractor and giant truck tires. And we're going to ram earth into them. And so we're going to have layers of rammed earth tires in here as the climate battery. So below the rammed earth tire layer will be the drain tile that deposits the heat from up here in the greenhouse into the ground. That'll come up into the rammed earth tires and store itself there for later use at night up in the greenhouse. That's how a passive solar greenhouse works in one method called the climate battery, where you store everything in the ground. Now, additionally, this is gonna be an aquaponic system in here. So we'll have at least 500 to 1,000 gallons of water in this tiny space. This is only a 300 square foot greenhouse, so 1,000 gallons is a lot. 3,000 would be all you need, and you wouldn't even need a climate battery. So water holds a lot of heat too. So if you want to put a water feature in your greenhouse, you're going to get a really good result with thermal mass and keeping that temperature up. If you just build a structure that protects the wind, the temperature is only 3 degrees warmer typically inside of a greenhouse from the outside. A geothermal greenhouse, you can get the temperature up 50 or more at night above outside ambient. And our purpose for this is to uh, have this greenhouse always above freezing. This is going to be our zone, let's say 11 or 12 greenhouse, like living in South Carolina. But it'll enable us to grow all year round greens, max it out in the winter for food production for us and neighbors and just anyone else who wants to come and enjoy the bounty in this little baby. While we're milling here, we can just come over into the greenhouse and get a snack or stay warm. You know, there's greenhouses everywhere, so you don't have to go far from food. You just eat it. Now, one other consideration is up here. You wanna make sure the glazing comes all the way up to the lip of your roof tight because you want the roofing to come and overlap at least two inches so that everything gets shed off here and you don't have any leakage. So make sure that's tight. It's a heads up. If you have any questions, guys, leave it in the comments. Now, we're building all these experimental designs and testing them this winter and tweaking them to get the best results. And then we're gonna supply these plans to the public for almost no cost. But you can get access to all of our free plans, special videos, and the availability to come here anytime you want and learn live by simply becoming a member of our Patreon. We launched a new Patreon page. We've already got nine members and we're looking for 500 and for a small monthly pledge to help our work here. You can also get access to our free greenhouse designs. You can uh, get free access to my phone so you can ask me any questions as you're doing the build. And just a good resource. Plus it helps us move along. Gosh, she looks beautiful. 
So you're looking at eight mile Mesa. I'll take you up to the upper geothermal greenhouse if you want to stay with us. And we'll grab a snack. <whistles> Gotta call the dog. So record snow in 48 states. Over half of them are covered, have snow on, on the ground. Breaking a 15 year record. Saw my update last night, you know that. So we're coming up into the zone one permaculture orchard. It's a pear. And there's some edibles in here. That's a November tansy with flowers. Still. Got a nice kale. There's some protected shard in here. But up on the hill there, we really have some nice produce growing. I haven't got this tank in yet, but I have. I did get the tunnel hand bored into the greenhouse right there. Not an easy, not easy on your shoulders. Same design here, much thicker. This is gonna come in at about R50. Our house is in here. Leah's art studio is in here and the whole rest of the structure, which is massive where we'll be able to work all year, all weather. Because of these giant barn doors I put in. So it's supposed to be warm for three days, maybe in the upper 20s at night, so, and sunny. So I can get this final cement work done for the final push. I'm really stoked about that, that I can actually get this finished. And we can get this closed in and have this amazing space this winter. This water is going to supply a shower here in the greenhouse where I can stand naked in the greenhouse every morning and take amazing shower just out in the plants. So heads up, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so now. I'll leave you with some shots of the mesa and the door. Guys, we're going to be uh, doing some uh, a lot of work on this in the coming days, so we'll have lots of these videos in the future. And additionally, one of the subscribers to the channel is flying out here on Saturday to be our electrician to wire the whole project. The barn, the greenhouse, the mill. We got a huge Quonset hut going over here. You can see the Kwanzaa hut pieces that are lying out there in the distance. Quick, I'll show you some of our strawberry patches that has come in in a year. That variety is called Sparkle. So South Dakota Doug Fir is a local Austrian pine catnip. Take a look up some of these shard varieties. That's called a uh, Luckyless, and it's just as amazing in the cold. It goes down to 18 degrees here almost every night. 18 to 25. Oh, really holding its shape, looking amazing. Look at that. You'd buy that, wouldn't you? And that's our winter leaf. Nice kale. This is a new variety that's going around called peppermint. Still alive. I'm going to take and show you some of these mustards and uh, arugula outside. So what we have is a medicinal mallow here. It froze, but it regrows. And this will get a pink flower in the winter. And here, these brassica um, flowers are delicious. You just come and eat them. And they're like little sweet broccolis. But I don't want to eat too many because I was out here this morning and our honeybees are still feeding on these. And all of our hives are filled with honey. So I may still be able to harvest some honey before winter because they have a lot, way too much. Look at this Mizuno mustard. 
I've been feeding it to the chickens and it keeps coming back. And they love it. You just give them a, it's a and it's seeding too. So I'll be able to maybe get some seeds from this, but it's already self seeded all year. And they're happy. They mostly like the grass. So usually a couple times a day, I'm just foraging around for all of our animals. And I can get food most of the year, eight or nine months uh, for our birds to be eaten. That's organic and delicious to supplement their feed. But not to mention me. <laughs> this is a really light mustard. You can make a whole straight salad from it. It's not like giant red mustard, which is real pungent. Plus, it's cold tolerant. Just look at it. We can come look at some other varieties of it. I have them out here. Another good uh, late season in the high alpine or cold environment is this uh, red Russian kale. It grows wild. Once you start planting it and letting it go to seed, if you keep spreading the seed, you'll notice it comes up every year everywhere. So here's some red Russian. And look, it's come up here, a new head. And here, and there. It's the last survivor, and then it comes and grows. If it's, it gets a couple sunny, warm days, you get some nice fresh mm, it's not bitter it's sweet the cold brings the sugar out i can't even tell you another shard doing good some more of these mustards right in front of the chicken coop all right chickens just got done molten and they're sweethearts so I'll leave you with the chickens. Guys, please check out our Patreon page. Support our work. Become a Patreon member. And you get free access to all our greenhouses. You get my lo my local phone number to call anytime. And uh, you get free access to the permaculture farm to come and stay for free. We're listed on Hip Camp and Wolfer Wolfing. Uh, in our Wolfing account is Three Canyons. And I'll leave that in the description too. Everything here is organic permaculture, all natural, sustainable. And we want to share the information that we're learning every day on how to be self-sufficient with the public because everyone should be doing this. Abundance is happiness. Working every day towards your abundance means working every day towards your happiness. I've never woke up so happy in my life. Be safe. <laughs>